see that would be uh, good for high scoring and for high average and for elite players, but you just have a little bit better with holding it lower, even though we're not having the same change in ball speed. And then the last area for cats is launch angle range. So this is indicative of arm swing and approach. So if they're the, their footwork or their left to right movement on the approach is not consistent, it can make problems in the, the launch angle. If they have swing shape issues, they can also have problems with uh, the launch angle range as well. So the elite level for this is less than 0.72 degrees. And we see that for all of the test conditions, they were either right at the elite level or below. And with holding it higher to throw slow, they were just a little bit better than holding it low to throw slow. And for throwing faster, similar results. Actually, for their normal condition, they actually were not at the elite level. They got better throughout the other test conditions for their launch angle range. And they were the best with their launch angle range with holding the ball lower to throw faster. And while also staying further away from the foul. So in summary, we're going to look at the actual values for each of the variables. So we have lower ball start for throwing slow on the left, so that's going to be the normal way of, or the traditional way of changing ball speed. And this is, these two are for standing closer to the foul line, so this is standing closer to the foul line, holding lower versus holding higher to throw slower. So the change in ball speed for holding it lower was a change in 1.17 miles per hour. So they decreased it by over a mile. And for holding it higher, they decreased by 0.82 miles per hour. So a change, the difference between those two about 0.35 miles per hour, which that amount of change in variability would be still considered an elite level on cats. So the velocity range for holding it lower was 0.51, and it was 0.48 for holding it up higher. So those are very similar, only 0.03 miles per hour. For the target error range for holding it lower was 1.9 compared to 1.3. So 0.6 boards would be a very small number of inches. So they're very, very close to the same. I don't know how many inches that would be, 0.6 boards. Do you? It's one on a 16th board, so. Okay. But it still is more accurate. Okay. More of a so now we get into the more bigger differences. Breakpoint range for the holding it lower was 4.2 boards, whereas on holding it higher to throw slower was 2.7 boards. So when we're talking about controlling the breakpoint, that's a big difference right there. It can be the difference between being in the pocket and big pouring or being a washout. So this. Again, this is just a small study we we did with six people so far, six players so far. But and they were never trained to do any of this. You know, this is the first time out of the box, you put the dots on and go out there and do it. And that's a substantial difference. Small the target, but really at the break point, that they were able to be more consistent doing it in a way that we haven't been teaching, that maybe we probably should be looking at a little bit because it, being trained you actually can get better at. It. There was a small variation on, on the ball speed range, and velocity consistency was pretty well built. So this is something that all of a sudden, you know, there might be some merit to this. Again, it's a small, you know, until we do more data, we can't be conclusive, but it definitely, you know, that's a huge difference down the break, down 39 feet. Yep. 
And with launch angle, it was 0 0.65 degrees for holding a lower versus 0.48 for holding a higher, which is a lot more consistent. Um, and if you're looking at, at CATS, like the main two ones, according to Brian and his, what he was doing with Pearl, with, when you're looking from pattern to pattern, probably the most important ones are going to be breakpoint, your breakpoint control and also your launch angle control. And so this one is well within, underneath, below the elite level for, for CATS, where 4.2 is above it. Launch angle range is very close to the limit for elite levelness where the 0.48 is well below it as well. And what, what pattern are you using? This is a sole, so a medium pattern. And then when looking at fast, we'll look at the same things. So a change in ball speed for holding it higher to throw it faster was over a mile per hour, while holding it lower was just 0.77 miles per hour. And what's interesting is that the actual change or the actual difference between the two is roughly the same, about 0.35 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are, are the pins on the side or was this just on strictly shadow? This was on the only thing they were shooting at was the, the 589. Okay, so, okay. so it was being set up every time. So they weren't shooting at a full rack because we wanted to limit. Uh, their subconscious need to strike. You know, when we do ball tests at Storm, it's we can really have that. Okay. So because we've noticed testers manipulate them. Right? <clears throat> yeah. Screen back. Yeah, we're, we're trying to limit it as much as possible without our mechanic getting mad. No pins there. <laughs> and we found in doing studies and tests that if we put the full rack out there, bowlers subconsciously would adjust <laughs> The legs change a little bit, you know, it's just, just human nature to want to hit the pocket or, or try to strike. So it would throw some of the consistency out of launch angle break point because it'd be small, subtle changes because we do want to hit the pocket and we do want to strike. So we've got to the point now that we only use the 5, 8, 9, which is something close to the middle for them to hit, take away that strike perception on any of these tests. And then with velocity, I had to, normally with uh, cats, you only go to two decimal places for velocity, but I had to go out to three because they were so close. Because they would, if I only went to two decimal places, they would look the same. They were a little bit different, so I went out to a third just so you can see the difference of 0.425 versus 0.2. <coughs> Target arrow range was 0.13 for holding it higher. Well, holding it lower was 0.14, so also very close to the same. Breakpoint control was 2.9 boards for holding it higher versus 2.7 boards. So a little bit, a little bit more consistent with holding it lower from going faster. Launch angle was 0.53 for holding it higher versus 0.48. We're holding it lower, which is the same as so launch angle was actually the same between holding it higher to go slow and holding it lower to go fast. And once again, with breakpoint and launch angle ranges being probably the most important for overall scoreability, they're more consistent with the lower ball, ball placement with going faster compared to going. Compared to holding it higher to go faster. How did the normal, holding it normal, but just moving back? I have, have it, but I haven't looked at okay. it. Okay. Yes. Um, this is at um, faster, lower, farther, or normal? Further, and, further back. And the <coughs> slower was higher, closer? Yes. Okay. Is that, you don't have that variable on this? Sheet. Yeah. The, both the, from, the two for the slower were at a closer distance, and the two for these two for faster were further back. Yeah, from a previous slide, you've seen that there was imperative that you move the distance to be consistent, so that's why those are kind of dropped out here. What's interesting on this is bear in mind that the one on the left here is how they were taught. 
That's how they normally did it. Five out of six, it never does. Six out of seven. Six out of seven, it never done it this way before until this test. Yeah, and yes. I think uh, originally when we did some studies and did dissertation on this, and we took guys like Marshall Holman, it's fast to feed, and then we took a Larry Lobb who would fall asleep talking to you. The position <laughs> was to fit their personality, not to change their ball speed. I think right. there's two different topics here. Okay, when you talk about having a person who holds it in the middle to go higher and lower, okay, that's a certain style and you're changing their position. Uh, are you setting up their game for a little lower ball position because they're fleet of foot? Or because they're a little slower moving. I think that's two different topics. Do yes. you agree? It, it can be, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, I think it really needs to be separated in a study. If you took a Marshall home and said, okay, Marshall, bring it up and take it down, which he probably couldn't get it much slower because he really liked to go fast. That was he was built that way. That's his whole personality profile. So yeah, we would yeah. never we would never have him hold the ball very high because he just he hated it. I did it with him for hours and he just he hated holding the ball high. So I think there's a big difference between talking about ball speed and some outcomes there versus their personality profile and what their synchronization of that human is and where they want to hold the ball a little higher or lower to build their basic game. I think we're almost talking the same thing if you really look at it because we're looking at the personalities of the Marshall Homer, which was very aggressive, very moving quite fast. They had to keep that timing in sync. And what we found, like if you took a marshal and he raised the ball up, I mean, his timing is ready to go out the window. It's not going to be consistent. Now, these bowlers in this test actually had the same ball height, which we were able to start. But we're not saying everyone starts in here. What the study we think is going to show is that you want to make an adjustment of ball height and distance to control your ball speed to be more consistent. So you don't change your internal timing. Now, some bowlers, we've had more success with just hitting the ball in the swing. So they didn't like, like Brian does not like, Brian O'Keefe did not like. You know, hold it lower, but if you got into swing earlier, it's not going to work for him. But these, on this study, they actually had the same ball height on the original one, so we were able to play with something. Again, it's at the start. The whole point is if your feet are moving faster, do you want the ball higher or lower? And if your feet are moving slower, do you want your ball lower or higher? Kim, did you have a question? No, I was pointing out. Okay. That. I'll, but I will jump in just a yeah, jump quick in. second here. Is the chief is down when you're in this group, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think that you know over the, the many years that I hold professionally, and, and speed was one of the one things that I, I struggled with. It was it was not a tool that I went to because the main reason was because my accuracy suffered, and I went with the traditional way of how to get faster and how to get softer. Couldn't do it. I could get slower, but I couldn't hit my target. So my timing suffered. So I think when you know this philosophy was introduced to me, it was the one thing, and it doesn't, you know, I don't follow it exactly, but typically when I want to get back, I move back and I lower my speed. When I want to move forward, when I want to get softer, I move forward. And for me, I still hold it at my normal height. So I don't think there's any exact rules here, but the point is, I think the big piece is that we have to find a way to get softer and faster because we know that that will change your ball motion. It's going to change your ball reaction. And at the same time, we have to be able to make sure our players can stay, can stay accurate and consistent with these two things. So being open-minded and, and recognizing that there's different ways to do it. And then I think with what Nick's studying, you know, biomechanically, what makes sense and what's easiest for them to do. Yeah. And it should also be known that, that the seven women that have agreed to participate in the study have all been world-class bowlers too. So they are at the elite level, so their training is going to be a lot more um, dictating of how they, how consistent they are with their, with the, norm, the, the traditional method of changing ball speed because they've thrown thousands and thousands and thousands of shots and using that, the traditional way of changing with very few um, shots of with this new change method of changing ball speed. And so things I still need to do for the study, once I finish collecting with 13 other bowlers, if not more, is looking at max back swing height. Because um, there is the thing, a thought process that does the, the max height of the back swing change when changing ball speed. If you lower the ball and go slower, is your backswing going to be shorter? It's 
never really been measured, so that's something we'll be able to measure more accurately and also see if it goes higher when throwing faster or does it stay the same. That's one of the things that I want to look at. I also want to look at spine tilt and shoulder angle. So looking at see how much uh, difference there is from from condition to condition on how is they're leaning forward or being more upright or leaning forward more with throwing faster are they more upright when throwing slower? Um, also looking at shoulder angle, not just this shoulder angle, but also in combination with the spine cell to get an actual better um, understanding of what's going on. And then we'll look at velocity and acceleration of the swing more accurately. Is the swing speeding up when they go faster? Is it slowing down when they go slower? Is the swing staying more consistent? I mean, is there going to be a change between fast and slow, or is it just a change in their footwork? We don't know. But we'll be able to see more. It's not going to be like the graph that I showed earlier, which is going to include the linear translation towards <coughs> the foul line. This will be, we can look at how fast is the swing going around the shoulder. That's going to be a better understanding. That's actually the, the speed of the swing. And if we're talking about timing and changing the tempo of the feet, to match up with swing, we probably want to keep the swing more consistent and just change the, the height to match with it. So, in that understanding, you know, like, if you're raising it higher to go slower and taking a longer distance, how's that going to be the same speed as holding it lower and going the same speed, I mean, the, the same distance? Just like with the release ratios, there's one that's going to have to be going faster than the other in order for them to match up at the same time. And then also need to run statistics to make sure that things are significant enough. So there's been some studies that show that ch certain changes are significant, but they might be significant statistically, but in real world, are they really um, significant? Just like the quarter mile per hour change in that one study, it was statistically significant, but in the real world, changing a quarter of a mile per hour isn't going to be that drastic. But We'll still have to run statistics to make sure that everything is consistent, look at co coefficient of variance, to see, look at how different each of the shots are and how consistent they are. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Yes. For your, uh, for your study with the, um, I guess the additional subject that you're getting, are they going to vary in uh, skill level? Uh, a little bit, but most of them will still be high level bowl. Any reason for it, or is it just because of the... Yes. The main reason is that because we're looking at shot repeatability, and we want them to be able to repeat shots at a, a certain level under their under normal conditions. Otherwise, we won't be able to distinguish between any variability. Yes? So when we're teaching people that are just starting out, and we're, we're teaching them this, is there anything that you would look at and you would look at someone and say, okay, maybe they're the person that would probably do better the old way? Or, I mean, what, what do you look at to decide whether this works for them or do you just try it and if it doesn't work for them, you try something else? I would say have them try both ways and see which one is most comfortable for them. I mean, my studies are not been scientific, just coaching lots of years. But uh, I think maybe 30% can, are better throwing it faster, holding up high, but the other 70% seem to be able to do it a little bit better, holding it low. And again, it's about it's just not about speed variation; it's about consistency as well. You know, it doesn't do any good if you're throwing faster. You have no control where the darn ball goes. I mean, it's just like a baseball pitcher; you can have a 105 mile an hour pitch, but you have no idea where it's going, what value it's. So it's going to be different from every player. But I mean, we see it every time when bowlers say their timing's up. You know, my timing feels off tonight. <laughs> Sometimes just a subtle change of raising the ball a half a ball height or lower the ball a half a ball height, all of a sudden their time you start feeling better to get to it. And you have a 50 50 chance, you know, if you raise it up a half a ball height, it feels worse, go the other way. You know, but so many times the timings are better, they start changing things. You know, and it's all about matching up your upper body to your lower body, your ball speed, swing speed to your tempo, your feet. So I don't think there's a hard cut and dry rule because we are human beings. But, you know, try it. Just see if you have some success with your players. Yes, Fred. Yeah. 
Kurt, you would say uh, if a person has a certain game, if, if, could we have a study of a range of how much you'd want to move? You would have a person that has a sore kid and hold it high and then have them drop it oh, down. No, no, That's no. ridiculous. So we right. just have that. If you said a half a ball or so, you know. Yeah, not it's much. Not, it's not much, yeah. Not much at all. And just because you bowled good holding it there, your student bowled good holding it there one time, doesn't mean you need to leave it there for the rest of your life. You know, you can go ahead and move it up and down just a slight, just a little bit. You are, and then we'll come up here. Okay. Uh, in my experience, I've, uh, it's actually opened my eye because I'm suffering a lot, changing the ball speed and keeping consistency with bowlers with one step leg timing. Then again, the, uh, the old, older version, with high, high ring and lower ring, acts absolutely good for structure with bowlers with optimal timing. So, then again, if I try the same thing with bowlers with one step leg timing, I'm in trouble. No, no results whatsoever and they lose all the efforts. So this actually gives me the idea of, of actually probably going this way with one step like that. Then again, I, I know for a fact with my students that, that the other way works just perfect with, with open time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right here. Right. Just a question. Just a question because we, we coach all ages. We deal with the uh, with young coach up to eight, six years of age. Some of the questions we have is regarding speed, especially as people mature, less them to be here that long. And it's more a question I can't throw my ball faster. There are any answers for that? Mm -hmm. What age are you talking about? Uh, Just about seven. Seven. seven is good. Seventy? Seven is good. All right. There's a there's a Canadian study we might if my president tomorrow I might get into it a little bit since we brought up but the uh, Canadian study that the base most youth go through two speed windows during their growth development and if you miss those speed windows you know you're not going to develop more speed later on you know you're going to end up being who you are there's two windows in age that you can you should be spending your most time. Not worried about skill level control, trying to develop speed. And if you miss those, and you know, at 70 years old, they can't go back to it. You know, you are what you are. I mean, when you get into your mid-20s, we can actually create some variation, versatility of speed. But your normal tempo is going to be pretty much set. It's the same thing like your hand action, your RPMs, because of the environment that you grew or developed. You know, people that started with bowling in the 60s and 70s, Definitely don't have the hand action of the 80s. And the 80s aren't even close to the 90s and beyond when you start having a resin coming there because of a different environment. And you're not going to be able to teach them the hand action of a Sean Rash. You know, you're not going to get that. It's not going to happen. So getting back to speed too, you know, we can we're talking about adjustments of speed and maybe get a little bit more, but having your normal speed going from 15 miles an hour to 18 miles an hour, probably not going to happen. Well, I was speaking more uh, not being lethal. What's going to, as I see, it's going to keep our industry going. It is the average bowler that wants to come and pay a bowler to try to get better. Now, by the time uh, I get a person that's, uh, say, 70 years old, uh, I, I can't give them the same answer I did somebody over 20 years old. Right. If they don't have the speed and can't create the speed, we have to have alternative of how they can be effective. And that's the question I have when we have something so we can help all the agents. Yeah, see, that's, that's the whole dilemma of being a coach. You're finding the right solution to the, the problem and working on the things that you can actually see your results from. Okay. Yeah. Fred, now go right to that. Hey, you know, another study I'd like to see if you ever have the time and the money to do it all is... Uh, that's the secret, isn't it? Time yeah, sure is. And I appreciate all these numbers. I love it. Uh, I think, you know, years ago, what we started seeing is the difference between the hinge start and the push away start. Okay, when you watch the Dick Weber who held the ball high and did this, and you watch Larry Long that held the same position but did this. Okay, and so that big, long, slow push away, Tommy Hudson did it and slowed his ball speed down versus the hinge start, which got it down in the swing faster, made his speed go. So to sort of answer your question, you know, when we get little ladies and little children, we say, oh, let's hold it higher but use the hinge start to get some velocity. Big difference when I get some big strong guys once in a while, but they're slow of feet. I just they, they don't like to hold it low, and they're still. I said, well, why don't we just hold it up and get a little more of a push away? So the difference between a hinge start and push away. Start